I, if this is the appetizer for the matchups we're going to get in the play-in tournament, I think we're in for a good good time here. I think we are in for a good time here. Um, so just to catch you up to speed as to what is happening, if you have not seen this, uh, if you've not been on Twitter or Snapface or Instachat or any of these other social media platforms that are out there that Bill Belichick likes to refer to. Um, I'm not on Snapface. And all I, that. Listen, I'm not either, Bill. It's not my thing. I, I hear you, man. Like, I, I, just, I, I, I agree with you. It's, I'm not, not a fan, not my thing. I'm also not photogenic. So none of those apply to me when it comes to having an interest and wanting to be on Snapface and Instachat. But there was a the All the Smoke podcast with Steven Jackson, former NBA player, and Matt Barnes, former NBA player. And apparently they had Gilbert Arenas, former NBA player, on their podcast. And he had some things to say about former NBA player Kwame Brown. And look, I, I hadn't thought about the name Kwame Brown in a long time. Like I, I had not, it is like not even, and, and no, no disrespect. It just hasn't been part of the discussion. He hasn't, you know, it's not like he's doing media. It's not like he's on TV post basketball career. Like I just, you know, he's kind of, he, he does his thing. He just not, not into it. It's just not his, not, not making the rounds, not doing interviews, just, just not his thing. Well, apparently Kwame Brown uh, was a little fed up with the trash talk from these guys. So he decided to go on to social media and he put together several responses, all right? Several responses. Now, they all have one thing in common. We cannot play majority of them on the air or else we will all lose our jobs because it is any foul word you could possibly think of Kwame Brown uses in his response to Gilbert Arenas, Matt Barnes, and Steven Jackson. But here's a little taste. Here's a little taste from former NBA player Kwame Brown and his response to those guys. I think you guys need to focus and channel that energy on some more real problems, like the way we are as black males and the way that we look. And Steven Jackson, maybe you could put that blunt out and pull your pants up on your and put that rag down and act like a grown man instead of a little boy. Becky with the good hair, go to counseling. And Gilbert, you already knew. I was quiet on you for years. I wasn't going to say nothing. You the right hand arm of uh, them white boys. What did I get? Five, uh, three years, 25 with the Lakers? I was slotted to get 80, 88 because what a Tyson got. You took millions out my mouth and you shout like you somebody, like you love black folks. You the whitest black boy I ever know. So y'all me with all that. Whoever, whichever one of these white folk paying you come at me, this here one, you better go find you something better to do. <laughs> so again, uh, that is uh, just a little little sample, a uh, little taste there uh, of uh, of Kwame Brown. Uh, look, he he ran the gamut. Uh, he uh, also in other videos uh, brought up the fact that. Uh, you know, Matt Barnes' uh, uh, ex decided to, to, you know, have a relationship with Derek Fisher. Um, by the way, a little-known fact about Derek Fisher, um, the freeway exit to the Fox Sports Radio studios there, um, Derek Fisher flipped his car uh, on that freeway exit. Uh, and uh, if I had just been, like, five minutes behind leaving my weekend overnight show, um, who knows? Uh, I would have, uh, you know, maybe seen that up close and personal. But, again, you know, we're not here to bring up old stuff and knock Derek Fisher. Just wanted to point that out. But, uh, you know, Kwame Brown, um, he, uh, he pointed out that uh, Matt Barnes uh, lost his – his ex to uh, Derek Fisher. Uh, he went after uh, uh, Gilbert Arenas. Um, he called Steven Jackson a, a fake tough guy. And so this, this went on and on and on. And he did a bunch of these videos, and all of them are X-rated, and we cannot air a lot of these on, uh, on here on Fox Sports Radio or else we lose our jobs. But here's what I think is happening. All right, and I'm not going to go like touch the racial stuff because it's not that's not my place. All right, I'm, I'm not you know I don't it's it's just not my place. But here's what I do want to say in defense of Kwame Brown. Part of the explanation for the response is because he feels like people are still at him about being a quote unquote bust because he was the number one overall pick because it didn't work out in the NBA. He is labeled as a quote unquote bust. And so this was him. And it came across as a guy who's been sitting around minding his own business, 
just living his retired life, not causing problems, not not trashing anybody who had hurt enough, knows these guys, knows these guys personally and decided, okay, you know, you want to play this game, we can play this game. Rowdy Roddy Piper had the great quote back in the day, uh, WWE Hall of Famer. He said, don't throw rocks at a guy who's got a machine gun. And Kwame Brown had a machine gun and nobody knew it. Nobody knew it because nobody's heard from Kwame Brown. And I'm, I'm going to defend Kwame Brown here from this standpoint. There is no such thing as a bust. There's just not. I know it's a great word. I know we like to use it because it, you know, it hits you right in the mouth and it's, it's an awesome word. Yeah, that guy's a bust. There's no such thing. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in the world of sports. Like I, I, it's why, and, and I'm guilty of this as well, too. I used to say, oh, that guy's a bust. And then you start to do this for a living, and you start to talk to players, and you start to find out things about organizations and, and, and how situations can dictate your future. And, situ- and then you realize, oh, yeah, there's a lot more that goes into this than just can you play or can you not play. So let's just break down the idea of being a bust. Why would somebody ever be considered a bust? Because they didn't meet other expectations. That's what it is. It's the same thing we do when it comes to draft grades. You remember how many teams in the NFL had a bad draft grade? Remember the Raiders got buried alive because they took uh, Leatherwood uh, with the first-round pick? They took an offensive lineman, and everyone said, oh, my God, that's a bad pick. Well, why is that a bad pick? Because your pre-draft analysis said that he should go here, and that's not where he went. It doesn't mean anything. The only reason you're ruling it a bad draft pick or saying that any team in the NFL had a quote-unquote bad draft is it's because it's different from you what you had expected. That's it. So there's really no basis and no evidence or, or, or proof that it's a bust or a bad pick or a bad draft. Kwame Brown... He went number one overall. That doesn't guarantee you that you're going to be a Hall of Famer. He just got drafted. It's not his fault he got drafted number one overall. He got picked number one. So like the idea that, oh, he's a butt, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe it. There's a lot of things that go into it. Like there's, He may have been overdrafted. You never know, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So the idea that somebody's a bust, I don't, I don't use the word anymore. It's out of my vocabulary. I can't stand it because I don't think it exists. Is Josh Rosen a bust? Some people say, oh, man, that guy's a bust because it's easy and it's lazy. Let's have a real discussion about Josh Rosen. He goes to Arizona, gets drafted high by an organization that traded up, if I'm not mistaken, to draft him. And then while he's there, when most every other team in the NFL, if you're going to put a rookie quarterback into a game, barring injury, you always want him to start with a clean slate. You want him to start with a clean slate, maybe off a bye week, and that's when you put that guy into a game. Talk to anybody in the NFL. Perfect scenario. When do you want to start a rookie quarterback? After a bye week. Why? Extra time to get ready, and that way you're putting him in there, and he can totally focus on just the task at hand and be ready to go as ready as possible for that game. What did Arizona do? They put Josh Rosen into his first NFL game while he was trailing against the Chicago Bears. And that defense. How the hell did you think that was going to work out? Sam Bradford wasn't injured. He turned the ball over. And they thought it was a good idea in the middle of the game to put Josh Rosen in to give him his first NFL experience. How the hell did you think that was going to work? Like, like, how, like how, how would that have worked? And then he gets a sniff as the starting quarterback there, and his organization goes, all right, panic move. Uh, we got to have Kyler Murray. We got to take this guy from college. You're gone. They send him to Miami. That's clearly a rebuilding situation. So he doesn't really get a fair shot there. And now he's bouncing around the NFL. He was in Tampa um, uh, on, on the practice squad. Then he was with the 49ers as a backup. Josh Rosen's never gotten an opportunity. He's really never gotten a chance. Is he a bust? So the idea of the word bust, I, I just I don't think it applies. I don't believe it. I don't think it exists. And the other thing Kwame Brown said that I thought was really right on point is in one of the other rants in which he wasn't cursing, um, and he, look, he may have cursed when he said this, but he pointed out that, man, you call me a bust. 
I put my mom on a golf course at 19 years old, meaning I worked my ass off my entire life. I went through a ton growing up, and I promised my mom at five years old I was going to get her a house. And not only did I get her a house, by the time I was 19, she had a house on a golf course. How are you going to call me a bust? That dude is a success. That is a success story. That guy made over $60 million as an NBA player, and people want to argue back and forth about what his box score looks like? Man, keep your box score. Can I borrow your W-2s? That dude is a success Put his mom on a golf course at 19 years old, and we call him a bust? How does that happen? Like, how, how does that even apply? A, a, at 19 years old, I was a bar back at TGI Fridays. 19 years old. Not only was I not putting my mom on a golf course, I could barely afford gas to get to work. I was a bar back at TGI Fridays. I was bussing tables at TGI Fridays. Kwame Brown bought his mom a house on a golf course, and that guy's a bust? I'll take that bust any day. I'll take it any day. So I defend him in this, man. I, I think the, this idea that we just want to label, oh, well, that, so-and-so's a bust. I can't stand the term. I can't stand it. Because if you're only focusing on what he is as a player and, and what he should have been, that's your problem. That's on you. Because those were your expectations. That was your expectations of what he should be. Because you thought going into it, well, this is where... Like, nobody... Just because you're drafted number one doesn't mean you're going to be an all-time great player. You have an opportunity. It doesn't mean it's going to work. There's a lot of other factors that go into this. But the idea that we're going to call these guys who are at the top of the food chain bus makes no sense to me. Brian Scalabrini who a lot of people would look at as being, oh, man, he's not a good basketball player at all. Have you seen some of the videos of him playing everyday guys like you and me? He goes to a gym. They challenge him thinking they're they're good players. You've seen him? It's literally like playing with kids. It's like playing with little kids because he's so good. Those players that are in the NFL, in the NBA, in Major League Baseball, in the NHL, they are top of the food chain. They're at a level we can't even comprehend. We, we have no understanding of what it is that they're doing. Top of the food chain. And we're calling those guys bus? 19 years old, his mom's on a golf course? What? Nin- mom's on a golf course. 19 years old, I couldn't afford a round of golf. <laughs> like, I, I mean, at mini golf. And this guy's putting his mom on, on a golf course based on what he was able to do as an NBA player. Credit to him. I defend the guy. I also didn't know that Kwame Brown was still in his 30s. I had no idea. I didn't realize it had been uh, that he was still that young. But nonetheless, Kwame Brown back in the news uh, and a little, uh, little verbal assault uh, as he goes back and forth with former NBA players. All right.